students that love to work hands on, those students that love getting up and moving around and working on machines and creating things. Um, students that really, really enjoy that. That's what you can expect in the manufacturing pathway. Um, especially in my classes, I was the exact same way as a student where I hated sitting in a seat for a very long time. And I love getting the students up, involved, working on machines, creating products with their hands. So again, the biggest thing that I push for is having that hands-on experience, um, utilizing all the equipment that we have here in the lab. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob. I would 100% agree. Um, I, I definitely uh, think that the, the focus in uh, these manufacturing related um, classes is being hands-on and really getting out there in the shop and getting your hands on the equipment. Um, so just for example, like my sophomore year, um, being in computer integrated manufacturing, that was like my first real experience um, with taking the knowledge I, I learned from freshman year in the PLTW courses and applying that out in the shop. So taking the, the skills I learned on the computer, designing and, and doing all the CAD, um, taking that out and building a, a high mileage vehicle um, and just learning welding and um, dimensions and designing and taking all that and applying it out to the shop. And now um, I further that knowledge um, junior and senior year uh, by taking um, CNC and the college college advanced machining courses. So I really, really love those. Um, I've been able to go out and um, learn and work on the, um, the CNC machines we have in class, um, the mills, the lathes. So it's, it's really a blast. I love going out there. Um, and it's not just like sitting on the computers. Uh, we, we go out there and we make things. So I really love that aspect. Thank you guys very much. Uh, next on to Kyle, like I said, Kyle is a, uh, a student at Harper College who is in their manufacturing programs, specifically the welding program. Um, Kyle, can you talk about what Jacob just built upon and what Phil built upon and, and talk about you know the life of a college student that may be going into this area in school? Sure, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's really the best way to look at it is college only adds on what uh, Jacob and Phil mentioned for the high school side of things, but it's not solely for if you went through it on the high school side of things. If you just walked into the college or walked into Harper on any given day and said, I want to take a welding course, well, if the courses are starting, it starts at the base level. So we, we go through the same stuff as you would start with in high school, but practice is what makes things like welding and machining far better. Like the... the um, the best way, uh, the way I look at it is there's like about a hundred hour skill curve to learn anything. And then it takes about 10,000 hours after that to actually become a master at whatever it is. So you really just need as much time working with the tools and working with the equipment as possible. And in my experience over at Harper, that's what it's been. It's just pretty much here's their project, go play on the machines. Ask me if you have any pr questions, don't hurt yourself. So it's a really kind of, not, not to say hands off, but learn by doing rather than by watching somebody else do and I feel that's really beneficial because I was the kind of kid that loved Legos and being able to do everything with your hands it's 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 incredible it's truly made me so much happier than thinking about going into uh, IT and computers and stuff like that beforehand um, yeah and we you know the harp and uh on the college level, we go into more detail on all that stuff. So they've got everything on the, the we've got a whole lab for CNC for mills and lathes and you name it on that side of thing. I think we're working on getting a five axis Haas machine in there. We have a large Mitsubishi laser cutter, which is really overkill for our application. It's, it's meant to be running 24 seven, but it's a nice machine that you will see examples of in industry if you're working anywhere. So being able to use that machine and not just, oh, here's a video of how you do it is a really cool experience that adds a lot and makes you a lot more versatile for anybody who might be looking to hire you. Thank you very much, Jacob. Um, Phil, really quick before we get to the uh, industry partners, um, we've mentioned a lot of words. We've mentioned, you know, manufacturing. We've mentioned oh, welding. Um, can you talk about a couple of the machines that the kids might use? I know Kyle hit up a few of them, but can we, uh, you know, do some definitions and talk about a couple of the machines that the kids will get some experience on? And uh, Jacob, feel free to, uh, to add on to whatever Phil says. Absolutely. Um, a lot of the machines that we work with are, are uh, based around metals and how can we shape, how can we fabricate metal, how can we manufacture metal in a specific shape. 
Um, so one of the mills that we focus on, on one of our first levels um, of the advanced manufacturing course is what we call a manual mill. And that's, that focuses on taking bigger chunks of metal and shaping them down into square shapes or something that you would find um, more rectangular. Focuses on that type of shape. But we can take pieces of metal that maybe are an inch and a half thick and we can machine that down to a very specific size. Maybe it has to be uh, three quarters of an inch thick. So we can machine very large pieces of metal like that. We also have manual machines called a lathe, which will spin material around in a circle and it'll create a round cylindrical shape. Um, we, for instance, we make screwdriver handles in our classes and the students can machine those handles to a custom design that they have. Um, so those are two of the main ones that we really focus on at the beginning levels. On the second level, we get into what we call CNC, or computer numerical controlled machines. And that's a computer controlled machine where we put a bunch of information into a, a machine and it'll automatically program and move around to cut something out to create a specific shape out of metal. Um, and we both have mills and lathes that are CNC operated or computer numerical controlled. Um, from there, we also have plasma cutters um, that are both manual and CNC plasma cutters. We can use that to cut sheet metal or thin pieces of metal. Um, and we also have um, different types of welders that we use as well. Um, we use some MIG welding, which is just kind of for your general basic steel welding. Um, we do have some TIG welders, which focuses a little more on um, aluminum welding. So we have all of those machines at the disposal for our students. So Jacob, is it safe for me to say with everything that Phil just described that, that you're out of your seat a lot, um, a lot of hands-on, you know, just, just having a lot of fun in the lab while you're learning? Oh yeah, definitely. I would agree. Um, yeah, like junior year, I, I really got out of the shop and um, we, we had a lot of projects where um, even the beginning of the year, we learned the safety and the basics of uh, the manual mill. And so we, we made like these die or these um, like game die pieces. Um, we got to take them home. It was, it was a lot of fun, but it was like learning the basics of the machine. And um, from there, we've, we've taken it farther. Um, and this year, my senior year, um, I've, I've been able to learn a lot of the basics. And um, as, as Philip was mentioning, like the CNC machines, um, I've been able to like, kind of write some programs and um, in my class right now, we're, we're designing these um, ridge wallets or, or, which are, are, are very similar to ridge wallets. Um, so they have an aluminum outside. And so we're, we're going through, and we have several different operations. We're doing the face milling pass, um, outside contour, different spot drills and um, drilling. And we're even able to like put a decal on the outside with um, a, a chamfer end mill. So um, it's, it's really cool. I'm learning a lot about the different specifics of uh, machining. And so, I mean, I'm, in, I'm out in the shop like pretty much every single day or doing work on the computer that's gonna contribute to um, allowing me to go out and do do further things in the shop. So it's, I, I would definitely agree, yeah. Well, thank you. So we got, like I said, we got a high school teacher here. We have a high school student. We have a college student who are both working to careers, um, hopefully in this industry. So why don't we jump to our other two panelists and, and start talking about some of the careers. Um, again, we have Robin who works for Hydroforce and we have a very special guest with Kathleen Burley who uh, works for G-Camp. Um, I'm gonna let you guys explain really quickly kind of your positions in the world. Um, Robin, we will start with you. Um, and then I got some questions for you guys. Um, I know that all of us know the answer to, but some of our panelists might not know the answer to it. So why don't we just start with a really quick introduction Robin, with you and, and, and what specifically you do in the field. Sure. I am the senior HR manager at Hydroforce. To the Wheeling High School students, we're a familiar name as we sponsored part of the automation robotics lab. And what Hydroforce does is we build hydraulic valve systems. So you won't see our products, but you see our end users every day. Um, John Deere, Caterpillar, 
Genie, Volvo, anything that moves the earth, products, um, farming, agriculture, logistics, that's where we're at. My job in human resources is to make sure that to run our production and to engineer our products and to sell our products that we have the appropriate staffing needs. So I am responsible for all recruiting. And then once an employee comes to Hydroforce, I'm responsible for developing them and putting them on the right career path. I have a team of six HR business partners and generalists who work for me, and we manage over 1,100 employees. All right. And then, uh, Shannon, if we could get uh, Kathleen unmuted. Um, Kathleen, can you hopefully um, talk about I'm good. What, what you do and, and how you help out the industry before we actually get into some specific questions about the industry? Sure, absolutely. Um, well, G-Camp between education and manufacturing. And so a lot of what we do is um, career pathways. You know, we kind of bring it to, to parents, to students at all levels. We work with companies and students in on their student apprenticeships and manufacturing. Um, hired on after graduation, you know, there's a lot of different things that we do just to, to get that, um, to get students interested. So thing is tours. Um, one thing that I want to just point out is, um, so, you know, we've talked about what manufacturing is here. Well, everything. So talk about a stable career when everything, everything you drink and sit on and wear is fracturing will not go away at any point. Um, the other thing, industry 4.0, which is the sexy part of manufacturing, I guess, and then the robotics that are, that are, and the automation that's coming. And, and if you know anything about the, our past history with the different um, the different things that we've gone through, um, the industrial age, and everything that we've gone through with computers. Industry 4.0 is now at the point where machines it's machine learning and machine talk. So it's when you can. Really, I mean, everything is is not used to be in manufacturing. A lot of it is is electronics and it's computer programming program or the CNC machines, they're computer numerical controlled. So they're computer, it's everything has really been so upskilled lately that it, it's not the manufacturing of the seventies and the now very cutting edge, very computerized robotic arms, automation, that's where everything is headed. So, and it all starts with the beginning, which is the programs that are offered through 214 with the lathes and the mills and the hand, the hand working tools that, that progress into that. So you have the thing we like to say, so. Yeah, and I know uh, Kathleen, uh, your, your connection was a little bit choppy. And the one part that I know you said that, that got cut out a little bit oh, is I don't think besides us that are involved in this, I don't think really anyone truly understands the need that is in this industry right now. Um, and, and Robin, if you could do me a, a favor, because I know you work in along with HR, can you speak upon that need and, and what students could possibly expect to see um, you know, as, as they enter this career field? And, and let's get down to it. Like what kind of living wage will they make um, what kind of, uh, of lifestyle are they going to lead? And, and really, what, what is the day-to-day -day for any of these students that really want to go into this industry? Uh, you're, you're muted. Shannon, can we, can we get Robin unmuted, please? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Well, as Kathleen um, referenced, manufacturing is what makes everything go today. And we at Hydroforce, um, want 
to develop the, the workforce of tomorrow. Unfortunately, right now we're, we're going through a severe shortage of labor. So wages in manufacturing have skyrocketed in the last few years. Um, for example, um, a year ago, um, an entry level position with no skills could look for a $12 an hour job. Today, that same job is paying close to $17 an hour. So imagine if you're coming out of high school with some manufacturing experience, you're probably looking closer at 17 to 19. And if you're coming out of a college program, you're certainly looking at a starting wage in the 20s. Uh, one of the things Hydroforce does is we sponsor apprenticeship programs where we pay 100% of your college tuition at Harper. And when you're not in school, you're working for us. So we consider school work time. So in addition to paying your tuition 100%, we pay a hourly stipend. So students going to school get paid to go to school. It is their job. And once they graduate, they have a great career guaranteed. And we have apprenticeships in CNC and in general, manufacturing, maintenance, and it's an opportunity to start a career with no college debt, none whatsoever, money in the bank, and myriad career opportunities in front of you. So speaking on that and building off of that, and, and we have about 20 minutes left in this conversation, um, you gave us a range of entry-level salaries. Um, let's talk of some of the credentials that are available. Um, Phil, if you could do me a favor and, and lay out some of the credentials that high school students would be able to get. And then Kyle, I'm going to put it over to you and we can maybe build off of some of those credentials that you're able to get in college that may help that starting salary go up a little bit if students are able to receive these, these credentials. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the big ones that we work on um, offering for our students are some NIMS certification. And NIMS stands for the National Institute of Metalworking Skills. Um, that is a, a standard that is very, very wide and broad and covers a lot of different topics and a lot of different things. Um, we focus on giving the students, I forgot the exact name of it because I know they've changed it um, within the past year or two, but we mainly focus on the quality and measurements and inspection certification, which is one of your first level NIMS certifications. Um, that's a certification that will literally be good for any job that you go into in manufacturing. In some way, shape or form, you will be looking at inspecting something and measuring something and looking for quality assurance. Um, whereas some of the other ones where it's like a CNC operator, that might be very, a little more specific. Um, so we really focus on just kind of that first level of NIMS certification. Um, and another one that we actually work with Haas on, because Haas is a company that is local in Elk Grove, um, they offer actually a CNC operator um, certification for their machines that students can go through, they go through some curriculum here at school, and then they actually go to Elk Grove and they can take a test with Haas to get certified on their machines. Um, Haas machines are, are very common in, um, in the education realm and with some jobs, um, they're very common machines. So it's great to have that certification. Um, and one of the other things that we're starting to work towards and taking a look at um, which I believe Harper offers already as well, is we're looking towards the American Welding Society certifications um, and seeing what we could possibly offer to our students with those certifications. Uh, so, and then Ky Kyle, you know, you're, you're in college, you're, you're specifically in the welding program at Harper. Um, what are some of the things that, that Harper gives you the ability to earn or, or work towards while you're in that program? So Harper, uh, what, what they're, we're doing right now is you, um, after you're through the basic classes, you can take the different qualification classes for the different processes. Um, I believe the main ones they're offering right now are arc qual, mig qual, stick qual, and pipe qual. Um, so different classes that is Harper's um, that you'll be welding on these coupons that are like the same that these organizations, the higher level organizations will have you testing on. 
and then we're doing the destructive bend test. I don't know if they have the AWS certifications right now, at least in my experience, um, but I, I believe they would like to offer those through, through Harper and not have to go to an external source. But from everybody I've spoken to, most companies will send you to wherever testing location to make sure you actually can do what you say you can do. Um, the other one that Harper offers is uh, a basic fab um, through the FMA organization, which I believe is right off of 90 and Rand Road. That's where one of their headquarters is. Um, we, they offer the FMA basic fabricators certificate, which is a, their, their certificate. Once you take um, Harper's two classes, they put it as the final for this class. And um, it gives you their certificate saying you understand the basics of cutting material up and being able to form it into something based off of whatever printer design you are given. So you can translate something to a final product. Um, and there are higher levels of that available. And I'm positive that if you were to speak to any of the teachers, they would be more than happy to show you how to get to those higher levels, but I haven't um, encountered them yet. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Um, so now, I want to talk about some of the external experiences that we have uh, available at uh, High School District 214. Um, before I do this, again, I can't thank Robin and, and Hydroforce enough and, and Kathleen and, and G Camp enough because without their corporations, without them, um, some of these things just, just would not be as feasible as we have it. Um, and when I say feasible, as, as many students as we have in it right now, you know, Kathleen's, uh, I'm sorry, Robin's company helped. Um, bring some stuff into Wheeling High School and, and Kathleen really helps, G Camp really helps with the high mileage vehicle that we're going to talk here in a second and, and the race that we have there. But let's talk about those experiences a little bit. Two of the big things that we do um, for students here at 214 and 211 takes uh, place in it as well are two competitions. Um, one of them is Robot Rumble and the other one is the high mileage vehicle. So I'm going to hit up Jacob first because I know since sophomore year, he's, he's been a uh, participant um, in the Robot Rumble. So could you please explain that event and what it is and really how your experiences in the courses um, helped shape that event and, and shape you uh, being a participant in that event? Of course. Um, so Robot Rumble, uh, it's one of my favorite clubs that I'm part of at, um, at my school. So um, we get together in teams, um, starting in the beginning of early November. Um, and we, we just get together and we design a robot that we'd like to um, compete with and um, eventually um, bring into one large arena um, and, and just have a, have a battle against other robots. Um, but really it starts with just a lot of collaboration and design um, on computers. Um, and so we get together, um, we figure out what design we wanna do. Um, and that's really where a lot of the, the basics that I learned um, from the PLTW courses, working on like the Autodesk and Fusion programs at school. Um, that's where a lot of that comes into play and it's very useful um, when we're trying to design our bots on the, on, on the computer programs. Um, and then like, um, as this, this upcoming season's approaching for our BattleBot season, it's gonna be very useful for me um, since I've already taken the College Advanced Machining and now I'm taking the CNC machining courses um, I already have that background knowledge with a lot of the manual mills and lathes. So, um, for any any uh, manufacturer or any of the um, when we have to produce any of the parts that are gonna or components that are gonna go into our bot, um, I'm gonna have that knowledge and skill. And so I'm gonna be able to help with my team. We're gonna be able to build those components, whatever we need to weld. Um, in the past, we, we've we've done a lot of welding. So it's not I've not only learned and built my skills in the courses, but also BattleBots has been a source of where I could expand my knowledge and ask a lot of the upperclassmen at the time um, for assistance and help. And so uh, it's really great. I, I love the I love the club um, and you build a lot of friendships and um, ultimately it's it's helped me a lot with my understanding of um, welding, machining. And so it's, it's really fun though. Cool. Um, and the other experience we have is high mileage vehicle. Um, I know Phil um, builds a car with his class. Uh, Kathleen, I know you guys are very generous with helping us out run that event. And I know you've been there um, personally and, and seen the event. Um, so Phil, could you please talk about that experience a little bit and what a student uh, will experience in that? And then Kathleen, can you hit on it about 
just being there as a spectator and, and, and what you saw and, and what type of an event it was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and to go off of what Jacob said, that's, that's what I love about both of these events is that it's pretty much all student run. Um, for the high mileage car event, I work with my computer integrated manufacturing class and they take and more or less build a go-kart from scratch from a, a long piece of 20 foot tubing. They'll cut it down and they'll create a roll cage and they'll design a roll cage. They'll learn the design side of things. Um, and they'll also learn the fabrication side of things. How do we bend a piece of metal into a large hoop to create a roll cage for the vehicle? Um, and the whole point of the design and what they're putting into the vehicle is to try to create a vehicle that has the greatest miles per gallon or MPG. Um, and we build these cars in class, they fabricate them, they put them all together and the students get to drive that vehicle as well down um, a, at a racetrack in Joliet. They'll do two laps around the racetrack. And from that, they can calculate the weight of the gas tank before and after they do those two laps. From there and the mileage of the um, racetrack, they can calculate their miles per gallon. So it's really, really cool. And I love seeing the students create something out of nothing and then get to enjoy that and Obviously, the best part is getting to drive the go-kart around the racetrack and have fun that way. Um, but it, it's, again, it's, a, it's an amazing experience to see students come up with something from scratch and create it and, and get all sides of it. Design, manufacturing, fabrication, and have an end product that they actually get to use. I think that's one of the coolest parts of both those projects. Yeah, and we have about, like I said, about nine minutes left. Um, to build off of that, Kathleen um, has been there as a spectator and, you know, kind of knew this year, um, her and G Camp are generously helping us out, um, you know, to push manufacturing even further. Um, we have some students, I know Phil talked about the, the combustible side of it. We have some students that are going to go out and design some electric vehicles this year. Um, so the electric vehicle will be a huge component of it. Um, it's something brand new that a lot of these kids haven't done before. So it's going to be neat to see. It's going to be neat to watch them go through that process. But um, Kathleen, can you talk about uh, just your experience there and everything you saw and how it was? Sure. And, and hopefully I have kind of an unstable connection, evidently, and no real time to fix it. So um, hopefully you'll hear most of what I have to say. Can you hear me okay now? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, um, so you're right in that the electric, the electric cars are going to be big this year, but it's exciting to go down there and see the, the efforts that, that these kids have made the entire year um, from start to finish, from design process to the execution of, of putting it all together and getting and watching them race around the track is great. I think my favorite part though is when um when when they go around the track and occasionally there's a problem there's a truck that goes around pick up picks up the car and they get to bring it back and i and i sat in the truck and it's really great to hear the kids problem solving together um different teams in different states there's there's kids from wisconsin and illinois and they're all like talking about their cars and problem solving together before they even get the car back so it's it was a great event you know one of our one of our platinum sponsors um big kaiser always has the winning teams he takes them down to indianapolis for i think it's the time trials or around that time for the indy 500 and they get a tour around that track and they get to see the museum and everything so it's it's very beneficial to kids and it's it's got every aspect of manufacturing in it so it's a great experience yeah, and I, I don't think any of us can can really express through words how, how cool these two events are um, for the kids. Um, one thing uh, I, I'd be remiss if we didn't point out, um, we all know that the next level is expensive. We all know college is expensive. Um, one of the, the key benefits of this program are our dual credit sponsors and the ability to earn some college credits. 
um, along with taking these courses. So really quick, Phil, could you, could you touch upon that fact as well and what kids can expect to get out of, um, uh, out of your courses that way? Yes, absolutely. Um, if students take both courses, um, the College Advanced Machine Technology and the College Advanced CNC Machining, if they take both courses, I believe they get six credit hours at Harper. Um, and I remember a long time ago when I went to Harper, I think it was up to about two or three hundred dollars a credit hour. I know it's gone up quite a bit more since then, and it's it's pretty expensive per credit hour now. Um, so it, it, it's a huge savings for the students to to get those dual credit um, courses and to get that college credit from Harper already. Um, and that's still a college credit that could be transferred out to a different school. It doesn't strictly have to be Harper. Um, if a student maybe does a year or two at Harper and then wants to transfer out somewhere else, that's still possible. Um, and I know uh, multiple people have, have brought it up where it, it doesn't have to be a dual credit class and then you get into a career and you're in that career. A lot of companies will offer to pay to extend your um, education or even if you want to take a step up and you want to move into a different position within a company, you can go back to school and the, these dual credits will help you towards that and help you achieve that. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Um, you know, to say say the least, I know everyone here um, has been in our labs. Uh, the opportunities that are available for these high school students are are unbelievable. With with some of the machinery that they get to work on, um, some of the technology that they get to use. To say that they are using industry standard equipment is an understatement. Um, I know Kathleen talked about automation. Um, a lot of the schools are getting robotics into it, getting automation. Um, Kyle, a lot of the schools now in high school have virtual welding um, using Lincoln's welding program. You could see it actually right behind Phil um, in his picture right now, but uh, real welding uh, programs. And actually uh, at Buffalo Grove, they're about to get a uh, robotic welding system um, delivered to the school here in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're always trying to push the envelope. We're always trying to see, you know, not necessarily what's next, but what's further than next um, and, and get the opportunity um, for the kids. Um, really quick, I would like to do just a couple of closing remarks um, and get you guys to the next session. Next session starts at 7.05. So we'll probably end this right around 7.00. Um, but um, Robin, could we just get, you know, after hearing all that and, and you being involved with the school district, um, how excited does it get you to see, you know, when, when you see a high school student uh, 214's name come across your desk um, for a possible internship or, or job after high school, knowing what they have been through um, in the programs that we offer? Well, if I see a resume that says 214, um, it goes to the top of the pile because we know what the program is. We know how good it is. We know the standards are there and we know that the kids come out understanding what it is to be in the workplace. And, um, we definitely go after the 214 kids at any time. Um, manufacturing is an exciting growing field. And if you're not sure where you want to be today, it's some, certainly something to look into because as you've all said, the, the pathways are endless where you can end up. Yeah, and then Kathleen, um, you know, with your just involvement, you being the conduit really between high schools um, and colleges and then the industry, um, you know, ha have you been happy to see the way that the districts are moving and, and the opportunities that we have in uh, providing kids? Um, one thing that I'm going to say is that 214 is a couple steps ahead. So can you hear me or did I break up? Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you for saying that. Yeah, 214 much, is a couple steps ahead. So you guys are on the cutting edge of doing everything that you should be doing and uh, to make the manufacturers happy and to prepare these students. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and we got to we got to remember here, um, Phil and I always say, 
it, it's just not for people that want to go and be machinists in the industry. Um, you know, it's, it's very important for people who want to be engineers, who want to design this stuff to still take those classes. Because if you learn how the machines work, if you learn how the machines build, if you learn how a mill turns <coughs> and a lathe turns, it's just going to make you a better designer. It's going to make you a better engineer. Um, we say to, I, I know it's not this session, but if you want to be an architect, learn how to swing a hammer. Um, it, it just helps you be better. It helps you be more marketable. And in the end, that marketability helps you make more money. Um, so that being said, I can't thank our panelists enough. Uh, Kyle, Jacob, Robin, Kathleen, and Phil. Thank you very much. Um, for those of you who are in the panel, uh, in the panel, I implore you guys to talk to your students, have your students reach out to their counselors. All the counselors have this information and, and everyone in 214 from our, our industry partners, our community partners, current students, teachers, um, staff members, we're, we're all here to help. Um, and we're all here to help guide you and, and, and make sure you have a good experience and, and help, uh, help guide those decisions because you, you need to make sure that you're prepared and, and more importantly, you enjoy what you do at the <coughs> So thank you guys very much. Um, Shannon, thanks for helping us out in the background. Uh, session two here starts in five minutes. So please go on to uh, your Zoom. And um, we hope to uh, see you guys in our classes soon. So thank you, everyone. And I hope everyone has a great night. Bye. -bye.